Hello everybody, this is Donnie Vaughn of the Marketing Twins. We're excited today to offer you a webinar, Three Keys to Understanding Social Media. I'm sitting here with Randy, my brother, and we are the Marketing Twins. We're so glad that all of you are on. We have a good crowd with us today, and uh, we know that many people are, are busy and are going to get the recording. We are recording this webinar, so we'll make that available to you here within probably 24 to 48 hours. Uh, our plan is to record this and then put it up on YouTube and make that link available to you so that you can uh, go and watch that at your leisure and so we'll be doing that here pretty soon so we're looking forward to offering this three keys to understanding social media um, a couple of housekeeping items you can see uh, the, the Twitter handle down at the bottom at marketing twins you can always follow us there we'll talk about some other ways that you can connect with us and some things that we're going to offer at the end of the webinar. So make sure you stay on. We are going to try to wrap things up around 10.50, 10.55. Um, we all know that uh, time is precious, and we know you have a lot of things going on. We have some meetings to get to as well. So we're going to keep this um, within the time frame that we talked about. You don't have to worry about sound noise. All the lines are muted at this point. So we're the only ones that are, are talking. So if you're in the middle of a drive through that's fine. If you're at home and the dog's barking, don't be concerned about that. Or if you're at your office and your boss comes in and interrupts you, that's okay too because we have all the lines muted so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but we are so excited that you're here, excited to be to share this with you. We think that social media is such a key part of any business. There are still people who don't understand that. Even though we've been dealing with this for several years, uh, it's not uncommon for us to get a call or a contact and people tell us, I have no earthly idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to post on Facebook. I don't know what I'm supposed to post on Twitter. I don't even know what Instagram is. And yet, uh, everybody seems to be doing it. Well, that's not true. Not everybody's doing it. And we're here today to share three keys to help you understand social media a little bit better. And Randy's going to go through those here in just a minute. But we're excited that you're here. Uh, we can't wait for, to share this information. If you want to, at any point, share this information on Facebook, tweet it out, that's fine. We'll let people know that you're attending the webinar. We would love to uh, let as many people know that we're offering this as possible, and uh, so we're excited to share this information. At this point, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Randy so he can pre present three keys to understanding social media. All right, Donnie, thank you very much, and welcome to everybody who... Uh, joining us live and many of you who are probably listening by recording so we are uh, gonna dive into this pretty quickly because it uh, I think it's essential and Donnie mentioned something very important I want to reiterate I have had several people just in the last week um, someone yesterday who said I just feel I'm so far behind on understanding social media let me put you at ease you're not that far behind uh, or certainly you're not in the only one who is so far behind. I was uh, recently speaking to a group of university students, and uh, we were talking about the history of social media. And it was interesting to me to, to, to see their reaction when we discussed that, you know, almost, basically 10 years ago, none of this existed. And so, or it was at the very beginning stages, but certainly not mainstream. So don't consider yourself boy you're behind and you're just you know don't beat yourself up over this it doesn't mean that uh, you're not here today to do something really important and get caught up so that you can be on uh, the right track to using social media in your business one of the things that we're going to talk about today in these three keys uh, is going to help I, I want you to understand because social media is not all of your marketing social media is a component of your marketing system and when we help our clients with implementing comprehensive marketing systems, that's going to include everything from, you know, all your gener ways to gener generate leads and look for ways to um, have a referral system in place. Um, you're looking at even looking at advertising, even looking at things online like search engine optimization. Those kind of things all fall inside of that big umbrella of marketing, social media marketing. Is just part of this strategy. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna understand today's presentation in a lot. It needs to be a part of a larger context of understanding marketing. And yes, uh, recently we did a webinar on the seven steps to marketing success. And if you if you were able to attend that webinar, you heard 
that just one of the seven steps included the topic of social media. So uh, just want to get you to make sure you understand that, first of all, social media is not marketing uh, completely. There's, it's just a part of it. So uh, it's important to learn all this. So let's get into what we consider to be the three keys. Let me give you the, the topics first, and then we'll go into the detail of what those are. Strategy, tactics, and integration. And again, let me reiterate on strategy. Uh, you will hear us talk um, many times in, in groups that we're a part of, online, on our blog, in our email list. We will talk extensively about the importance of understanding strategy before tactics. Tactics includes all the things that we're going to talk about today and the tools and the different uh, uh, venues that you can be in, involved with in social media. But without a clear strategy, then all of that will go nowhere. You will find yourself discouraged and very likely, like some people do, they will self-profess that social media does not work for them. I've heard people say, well, I got on Facebook and I was on there a few weeks and we didn't get hardly any likes and I just don't think Facebook works for our, our business. Or somebody said one time, I tried Twitter and I was on there for a year, didn't get many followers and I decided Twitter just doesn't work in our industry. And I can, I, while there may be pockets of things uh, where that doesn't apply, very rarely have I found an industry that can't find some way to use social media in their marketing. Now, doesn't what we're going to see today is it may not, we may not be using the right tactic, or often the case, we just don't have the right strategy in place. So we're going to talk strategy first, and then tactics and integration. So let me dive in first to the first one, uh, the first key to that is that is strategy. We have uh, always, we're always being asked when it comes to social media, what is our strategy? What do we post, uh, you know, and how often? How do we know who to connect with? Where do we find our audience? And those are all important questions. And so that's why we need a strategy. So we're going to talk about the, uh, give you a strategy today that will help you in becoming a helper. Now let me explain what that is. Helper is going to be our acronym today that's going to guide you, kind of give you a, a real quick reminder when you're thinking about your strategy on social media, you're going to think about the word helper because, and we chose that word intentionally because social media at its uh, true essence, I guess, is very personal and the way we see it often used is very narcissistic, very social, very self-glamorizing. Uh, certainly you see it on, in, in the popular culture. Uh, but even you see friends who just seem to want to talk about themselves and their own lives. And then we look about how our, our business, and you see businesses talking about their own business and their own selves, and that's all they post about. And you may have signed up even to like a Facebook page of a particular brand that you like or a business, and over time you just all they talk about is themselves, and it gets kind of old, and you just think, okay, I'm not as, that, I'm not as interested as I thought I was. Today we're going to introduce the idea of being a helper. If you're a helper, that's counter-cultural in social media. It is the exact opposite of what most people are doing. And I think if you find yourself being a helper and being useful, you're going to find yourself much more effective on social media. So that's just going to give you your strategy because it's going to give you some specific things to post uh, and knowing how to reach your audience. And so we're going to use the word helper. So let's start with the letter H and we're going to discuss the idea of that. And we'll see this visually later in the diagram, but you'll see, you'll know that you, the absolute center hub of your whole social media system is your website. So first of all, you need a real dynamic website, something, and I'm, what I mean by dynamic is something that can change uh, quickly. Uh, it also means that it probably needs to be something that you know how to change yourself or you have quick access to someone who can change it for you. Uh, the, the days of being able to say, well, we had a website five years ago, we haven't changed it since, it, that's pretty much behind us now. We've got to meet, be more dynamic in our in our, in our relationships with our customers and the way they view our. They they need to see new fresh content on the site, and so you need to be able to update your site. I, we always say, you know, we like to put it in your hands, uh, so you can control the content yourself. And there's ways to do that. Uh, we do that with our clients all the time. Is put them into a system, a website system that gives them the power and control over that content. So your, your website is going to be the hub of that. So when you're sitting down at your computer, sitting down there next to your smartphone, and you're trying to post 
on a particular social media tactic, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, you want to think about your website. And so I, I like it, liken it to what is out there on my website now that would be useful or helpful to my audience. Is there something that I want that maybe it is as simple as, hey, I want them to sign up for my newsletter, but I'm, I've got to create a page on my newsletter so they can quickly go to it, and so I'll be able to share that link on a Twitter or Facebook. I want to be able to send them to a, a, a maybe a blog article on my site. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, here's a gallery of our work, here's a list of our products and things like that. That's what you want to think about when you think about the hub and going back to your website. Now the second one relates to that, and that is being educational in what we post. What I would suggest as you, as you look at this, if we want to be a helper, the, when you think about these six letters, I would look at this E part probably being about 80% of your social media. Now a lot of you, are, that, that, that's going to be brand new because all the social media stuff that you follow is all self-promotional. We're going to talk about one of those, uh, you being able to do that because that's one of the letters, but we're, we want you to be educational in what you post. Informational, helpful, useful information that you're going to share with your audience. Now here's two ways you're going to do that. You're going to, you're, let me get these words right create and curate. So let me go through those real quick. Create is you're developing content of your own. Blog articles, written stuff, ebooks, things that you can share with people. Those are going to be ways that you educate through writing. And you want to create uh, some of your own materials. Your own FAQ page is an excellent source for educational content. Uh, partic particularly, you could take your FAQ page. You may have 24, I uh, always like to use 24 FAQs, and you have a whole page about that. And you write a brief description, a brief response to those frequently asked questions. And you take those 24, and now if you do the math right, you've got two blog articles each month, so a total of 24 all year long, which you take each one of those brief responses, turn it into a blog post, and now that goes into maybe three or four or five hundred words uh, longer description, longer response. And then you could turn around and make uh, some ebook, uh, free report content out of either individual, uh, maybe group those questions together. You can repurpose that same content. You have this in your head. You are great at what you do. You are skilled. You are talented. You are trained in what you do. And your customers are always asking your questions. They're always coming up there and calling you on the phone and asking, can I pick your brain a little bit for this? Or they come up to the counter and they say, I, wanna, I, I need to know how to do this. Or what does it cost? You've got bazillion questions. And so you can turn those questions into educational material. It doesn't mean you have to give away the farm, as they say. It means you give them enough information for them to say, you know, I really like this person. Uh, I, 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 it's a way of developing trust. We talk in marketing all the time about developing no like and trust with your customers as they get to know you. They've got to have that affinity relationship with you to like you and trust you. And so educating them, providing that helpful information is going to be, I think, the biggest part of your social media strategy. So be a helper. Be somebody who educates your connections with the kind of high-value content that will help them. Okay, so now we go to the L. Word, and there's two things that we see that would be fun to do. And because social media is a lot about helping and, and being useful, but if you want to have some fun, do something that will uh, be inspirational. We like to have, as, as a leader in your industry, you're a person. You have leadership uh, ideas. You Perhaps you lead your business. Maybe you're the business owner. Or you want to lead in your industry, kind of think out of the box and challenge your industry to think differently about the way we treat our customers. You're a leader. And why not share some leadership thoughts of your own? Or it could be that you, again, we go back to the idea of creating the content. I didn't share the second one. You create the content, but you also curate, which is a way of saying we gather that content from other sources. It could apply to education content. And you could curate, bring together, gather together leadership quotes, inspirational ideas from other people. You follow people. You read their books. You, read, you follow them online already. And you could share their inspiration uh, as well with your audience. So leadership is a great part of your social media that your audience and your followers 
they they like to see that too, and they they want you to inspire their day. And so you could do this with quotes, with text, certainly with as we get into uh, pictures like Instagram, you can do Instagram photos that have quotes from different leaders in your industry or people that you're inspired by. You see that all the time. So leadership is a big part of being on social media. The other part is just having some fun with social media uh, is to create posts that, that uh, bring some laughter to everybody's day. We need that. Uh, Fridays are good days to do that. Uh, maybe even middle of the week. Uh, even the, there's, there's something on, on social media now called You'll see it often on Twitter, maybe even Instagram, sometimes on Facebook, uh, something called Throwback Thursday. And it's a, we call it a hashtag. And, and it's a way to, to harken back to some previous moment in time. Maybe it's a photo back 20 years ago. Uh, but perhaps it's maybe a blog post that you wrote a year, uh, a, a year ago. Or maybe it's something like with the laughter that you could go back and say, look at the, look at the president of the company or, you know, look at what looks at how we were when we started and look at all the funny leisure suits that we, we wore back then. And you could do a lot of fun things that laugh at yourself behind the scenes uh, are, are often very fun. Maybe you could do some videos in your educational moments back in the E letter. You could educate. You could record some videos. But what are, what are the best parts of videos sometimes? It's the blooper part. It's the outtakes that didn't make it. It's the mess ups. Well, you could do a whole part of that in, in your social media and sharing some of those bloopers. Anything to bring some laughter to people's day. Just be, be cognizant of your audience because maybe your humor is fun around the office. Just keep in mind your audience because humor on social media can go the wrong way and you can turn people off, particularly it relates to religion or politics or things like that that you think are funny. doesn't always... Um, bring laughter to the other to your audience and you don't want to turn anybody off by by going in this direction but uh, certainly that's why you, laughing at yourself is one of the better ways to introduce that part of social media all right i mentioned the idea you can do some self promotion but the problem is we do 80% self promotion a lot of times on social media especially businesses because we get in our head this is free uh, free media you know so instead of having to pay for that advertising we're going to get on facebook and just go to town and just promote and just it's all we think oh it's all free and I'll I'll be able to reach my audience this way well your audience is not interested in getting on Facebook and seeing your self promotion all the time that gets old it gets it's tiresome and it's just frankly we just get certainly get disinterested in your constant self promotion so turn that around instead of being 80 percent maybe do 10 percent uh, five percent of your time where occasionally you'll promote yourself. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive. Uh, it's like, that doesn't make sense. I thought we were supposed to get on social media to sell things. Actually not. Social media is what it said. It's social. It's relationships. When you're developing a system of knowing and liking and trusting with your customers, and you, what we always say is you're nurturing loyal ambassadors and nurturing customers who repeat and refer, they, this, this uh, self-promotion is not going to work with them. Doesn't mean though that you can't occasionally say, "Hey, we have a promotion today. We have something going on. We want you to, you know, we do this all the time. We say, "Hey, sign up for this webinar." We think that's a little bit more on the educational side, but certainly it's something that we're doing. Um, we might even do a promotion on a custom Facebook page or a coaching program that we have coming up. We'll do that, but we try to limit that to um, just a small portion of our post and do more education. So we hope you'll see that from our, uh, our example. So that's, that's the P part. You can do this, but just be limiting in what you post. So now we go in the last two really are about nurturing the relationships we have. The second E in our word helper has to do with engagement. Social media is not a one-way megaphone which you stand up on the table and tell everybody you know about you. It's a social platform. It's a community platform. Uh, no matter what it is, if it's Twitter, or if it's Facebook or Instagram, or any of the other tactics that we'll see soon, it's there's some element of community building, relationship building into that platform. And so you've got to engage. Certainly some of the basic, uh, most common mistakes we see with businesses who post things online and then they never go back to monitor it. So someone asks a question in response to a post and it doesn't get answered. 
I'm not saying you have to be on the spot and, well, you have to answer in five seconds or not, but most of the time you need to try to respond, I think, within a few hours or certainly by the end of the day. Have some way to monitor that. There are different monitoring tools you can use, but even just, just checking it on your desktop or having somebody, having your spouse or a volunteer or a friend of yours or somebody who is an employee and just say, would you monitor the Facebook page and just let me know when there's something I need to comment about. That's all you need to do is tell them, can you let me know when there's somebody who responded on Twitter or somebody sent an email back or something. I need to be able to be responsive. Engage with people, making comments. You can also go around and, and try to make comments on their stuff as well. Uh, you know, go to, the, go to other pages and make comments and share useful information. It's not just uh, engaging on your own site, but also looking for ways to engage elsewhere. And the last part is when we get into the R, and that is reaching out and nurturing relationships, maybe even outside of your current community. So I love this about Twitter. Twitter has been one of those things for me that, uh, you know, I can say honestly here, it's not like we made a ton of money using Twitter, but I've developed some really good uh, strategic partners. Um, I think in a roundabout way, we've gained some clients from other people who followed us, became aware of what we did, and that ultimately became, um, as, I think that's part of the pathway that we got some customers. But more than anything, it's just develop. It's a it's a way for me to learn. It's a way for me to um, extend my community to where I'm getting to know different people, both locally and virtually throughout the the world. That sounds a lot more you know hyped up than it should be. I mean, it's really just honest. I I'm connecting with people in different industries that we're a part of that that I don't know how I would have ever reached been able to connect with them before. But now we can share ideas. I can ask them questions. I can read reshare some of their material, and we're developing uh, a relationship. And again, that's a part of social media. And so I wanted to give you that as a helper uh, strategy. We call it the social media strategy. So just look at that list. It's the summary, just thinking through when you're want, what to post on, what is my strategy on Facebook, and apply this to each and every tactic that you'll see in just a second as we go through the tactics. Apply that. And then, then sit down and say, okay, what am I going to do today? Instead of just being posting promotional things all the time, reserve those for just a, a limited amount of, of your a limited percentage of your post, and do more education. Le offer something of leadership, or uh, look for a way to maybe. I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying I'm going to spend 15 minutes today, and I'm not going to post anything, but I'm going to go and comment on other people's stuff. I'm going to reach out on Twitter. I'm going to try to follow some new people and see what they have to share. You're developing relationships and reaching out and building those. So I want you to know that strategy. Keep that in mind. And now we're going to go on to the next uh, segment of our uh, presentation, the three keys. And this is the tactics part. This is where we, we get fun. It's fun, but it also becomes overwhelming because what I want to show you today is what we call a social media wheel. And it may seem real overwhelming at the, at the end, even that graphic on the screen now is going to probably say, well, there's a lot to this, and we're going to build this out. We're going to do it really fast. But I want you to see today before we get started, I don't want you to think at all, I've got to do all of this all at once. These are just some of the categories of your social media system that we think are important to consider. Some Probably what you're going to do is want to prioritize these, uh, maybe three tiers. Uh, maybe one tier is we've got to do this now. Second tier, we need to do this by next year. Third tier, uh, maybe later. I don't, you know, and there might be another category. You say we'll never do that, but I don't necessarily think that's a good category to use. But so just now, a little bit later, and much later, prioritize that way. So we're going to start off the bat with email marketing. Oh, I'm sorry, the website. Yeah, I talked about that earlier. Uh, the website being the hub of your social media strategy. So again, th everything revolves around this, and, and let me point that out before we go to email marketing, you'll see this hub, website being in the middle, and then these, what we call these little spokes out of the wheel, they kind of can look like they're going to go out from the website to these different social media categories. As you'll see too, the social media categories on the outside can send people back to the website, and that's really a big part of social media, sending traffic back to your site. And then you see this outer circle that kind of links them all together. So that makes them all interconnected. So this is a visual diagram of what 
your social media system is going to look like, and we're going to build this out with uh, a number of different categories. So first one we're going to start with is email marketing. We use Constant Contact. There are other tools to use. Constant Contact is affordable, and we like uh, the ability to create lists and things like that that you can do with Constant Contact. Um, there is a constant contact button on our website at marketingtwins.com. If you want to play around with it, they do offer a free trial you can use. Uh, use it, play around, send out some emails, and see what you think. There's templates that you can use to build it out. It is, uh, we like to use it, and it's one of the, probably uh, one of the best website uh, email marketing providers out there. So we like uh, email marketing a lot, but there are others like MailChimp and uh, AWeber and different things. So. Uh, email marketing, though, is essential because it's a way to communicate with your audience. Hopefully, you're capturing email addresses of people in your uh, transactions with them, and in your. But you can also, as part of that educational content that we provided, we showed earlier. If you go to our site, marketingtwins.com, one of the ways we do this, we give a lot of away a lot of free stuff, and uh, some of that free stuff is given away. Uh, via email. We ask for your email address and then we send that information out to you via email uh, and then that puts you in our email database and then we, we have a system of communication that comes out via email marketing. And that what that allows us to do is to be in kind of a, a constant top of mind. I'll give you a quick example and we'll move on, but we had a client several years ago who said, uh, I really want to talk to you. We had lunch, we had multiple phone conversations, we thought he was going to sign up. It was going to be a year-long program, and we, he was ready to install this comprehensive marketing system. Um, and in the very last minute, he said, you know, I'm just not ready to pull the trigger yet. I need to think about it some more. And then he kind of went off into nowhere. We'd never heard from him again. Well, I, I kind of really thought, well, I guess he's off the radar. We won't even worry about that. So 10 months later, of course, he was in our email list because he had uh, reached out to us before and, and we had him in our newsletter list. We would send out, I think it was just a monthly newsletter, and we would talk about different marketing topics. And one day, right uh, almost within the hour of that email going out, 10 months later, he called and said, hey, I got your email again. I've been loving all the stuff you've been sending, and I think now I'm ready to go. And we've been nurturing that relationship, really not even consciously thinking about him, but we put him in the system, and it, and it worked. So email marketing is a fabulous way to get people into your into your database and also have a create a constant source of communication with them, driving them back to your website, linking to in your email marketing messages, linking to your website, driving that traffic back. Your blog is going to be another critical area to develop for your social media because this is where you can create content. You can create your own content, make it fresh, dynamic. Not only does Google reward websites that are fresh and dynamic, but your customers expect too. They need to know, is there a reason to come back to your website? If they can say, I visited that website five times over the last year and it's the same, it's always been, then why would they ever come back? But if they know that through your blog and then email marketing even says, hey, here's a new blog post, then there's some level of expectation that your blog is providing fresh content that they need to revisit your website. We like the websites that have the blog integrated into it. That's why we that's what we do with the websites that we create for clients is create a blog integrated right into it. But it's a way to have a, a place on your site to create unique content. You can share ideas from other people as well on your blog. You can do all kinds of things on your blog, written content, even video blogging, which is simply providing video onto a YouTube channel and then embedding it onto uh, into a blog post. You've probably seen these done before, but you can do this yourself. In addition to creating content of your own, again, the same strategy that we talked about earlier about reaching out and engaging. Go on to other blogs, people that you know in your audience, maybe strategic partners. Maybe they have a blog and they write an article. Well, go on and share a comment with them on their blog or uh, share their blog with somebody on, on Facebook or Twitter. Your blog provides an excellent opportunity to create content and conversation. And so the next one we'll go to is your social networking. And this is where these kind of, and I'll tell you right off the bat, these are the three that I would strongly recommend probably doing, uh, putting in your top tier of your priorities. This main, I would just say this is probably the best, for most people, 
these are the most important things you can do is your email marketing, your blog, and all your social networking. It doesn't mean that you have to be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Google+, Instagram, all these different places all at one time. It doesn't mean that you couldn't employ a strategy that some people call that says be everywhere because that's where your all your, your audience is everywhere. You don't unless you have a unique audience that's only on Facebook. Well, if that's the case, then be on Facebook. But it, most likely, you've got people on Twitter. You've got some who are anti-Facebook, and they will not get on Facebook. They only do Instagram and Twitter. You've got others who have no idea what Instagram or Twitter is, so they're only on Facebook. So you have to be where they are. You want to be communicating your ideas in different ways. And so there's tools out there you can use to help uh, facilitate that and make sure you're not having to this to consume your day but uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, at the end of our presentation I'll give you some ideas on how we could help you uh, understand some of those tools but Facebook Twitter all this social networking is where that that is where you're going to share you're going to share a lot of that educational content we've been talking about the all that the, the whole day today so social networking is certainly a big part but it's as you can see it's not the only a lot of people think social media is limited to Facebook and Twitter well, it's, this is just a part of it. So let's move on around the wheel. On-demand media. These are primarily a couple of things like webinars and podcasts. Uh, we do a podcast for our Christian school marketing audience. There are a lot of good podcasts out there that you can listen to on your own time. That's why we call it on-demand, just like you would a DVR. You can consume the content when it's appropriate for your schedule. We produce. Uh, we like to do webinars from time to time, different seasons of webinars so that we can provide content like this. Now this is a live webinar so some people can enroll live but it does have that feature of on demand through the recording. We can provide a recording and we, we've had a number of people who registered for this are now listening by recording. And so this on demand opportunity exists and creating this content allows you to reach them on their terms of time. And so I think it's important to consider doing that. Um, and again, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to share with, if the, share with you an idea on how we could help you for free, help you um, understand how to produce your own webinar just like this. So I hope you'll stay, stay tuned for that because we love webinars and I think you can do them as well. Press releases and news releases. This is the, you know, the old idea of sitting down on a typewriter and typing out a press release, having you run it down to the um, local newspaper and hope, cross your fingers, hope that they'll put it in the newspaper. That's kind of the old way of press releases. The new way is to produce them online. Digital press releases online. Uh, we use a service called PR Log, like press release, PRLog.com. There's a lot of distribution services out there. We like this one because it's free and you can produce as many press releases as you want. That's uh, one of the advantages. It, they do get the attention of the search engines. Uh, that changes from time to time, but there is some relevance to when search engines find that content that's in that press release. It's free to use, and you can, I wouldn't say stuff them with keywords inappropriately, but you can write your press releases about things that are going on in your business, maybe a new hire, a new product you have coming out, a new workshop you're holding. You can use keywords so that search engines like Google will pick that up and they'll see it. So you're writing not only just to get the attention of the press, which would be nice, you know, occasionally get mentioned in a newspaper article or have somebody come in and do a feature on you, that'd be good. But some of your content is kind of, you know, it's not headline news. So, but the important thing about press releases is, is you're also getting the attention of Google who's trying to find relevant content for their audience who's searching for those keywords. So writing press releases is a good way uh, to engage with your audience. All right, I love the next two. Images, uh, we'll talk about video next, but image sharing is a huge now. Uh, we're just a visual culture. Having images, there's a lot of places to store those images. Flickr has always existed, uh, Smug Mug, uh, let's see. Oh, well, there's a whole lot of uh, Instagram, of course, now, and Pinterest are both huge players in the visual uh, content. And, you know, images like that you take on your phone or uh, with Pinterest, you see things that you pin uh, on around a website and you see something you want to uh, post on Pinterest, uh, you share that with people who follow you. And uh, I could go on and on and for hours about a, a visual content strategy, and we'll probably do a webinar soon about that, but just having images out there. And those images can be photos or it can be graphics 
again, that maybe an image of some sort, and then you overlay a text on top of that. Maybe it's a leadership quote. We mentioned that earlier. You could share that. Um, you certainly, lots of ways to use Instagram for this. Uh, that's a very mobile-oriented mobile, mobile uh, oriented visual sharing, uh, image sharing uh, site. So these, these are the kind of categories that we're seeing in your social media. And some of you are saying, I, I do Pinterest on my own, but I never thought about doing it for my business. Well, I guarantee there's some ways to do that. And again, we'll talk about at the end of the webinar uh, some ways that we could help you do that. Video sharing is the next one. Again, this has always been important. We, we love to watch videos in our culture. Um, not long 45-minute videos, even though this one, this recording of the webinar will be on video so you can see the slides. So we do those from time to time. But we have a, a video sharing strategy where we provide short tutorials of how to do things. So we do that on our, our YouTube channel, on the Marketing Twins. You could do the similar kind of thing. Uh, so YouTube and Vimeo is another site that is very common for sharing videos. You can do all kinds of things with video. That's been so huge for so long. YouTube is one of the biggest search engines out there beyond just Google, and Google and YouTube are now linked together. So it's, uh, it's huge to be on something like YouTube. But now we've got something else that's come up uh, in the last year, really, and that's this. You may not have heard of it, or you may have seen these. But it's called Vine videos, and these are these six-second mobile videos that people take with their smartphones, and they're sharing them, and they're sharing them on Twitter, and they come into. It's just amazing that what people do in six seconds, and it's a way to get people to know, like, and trust. And some of them are goofy videos, but and they have no relevance to a business. But I've seen some businesses use some six-second videos to do some pretty phenomenal things. Again, not very self-promotional, more educational in some other ways. Laughter is a big part of Vine videos. But then in the summer of this past year, Instagram launched their video service. And so Instagram was just strictly photos, now offers videos. And they're a little bit longer than the six seconds, so you get a few more seconds out of it, which, uh, again, uh, in my Instagram feed, 50% of my feed now is videos. And so video sharing is huge in our social media culture, and you might want to explore how to use that as well. So as we get uh, through this wheel, let me go through it real fast because these, these latter things are some things that you may or may not have heard of. And again, probably I'm going to put some of these on the lower t uh, second tier for you. You may disagree, you want to move them up, but online reviews is certainly important for your online reputation. Go to, I would say, your Google, Google page or your Google Plus page now. Um, look that up for your business and find that and get people uh, making reviews for you. Uh, if you don't have them, you need to, to get online reviews going. All right, social publishing is just another way to curate the content or publish your own content. Maybe if you do present sales presentations or PowerPoint presentations anywhere, then you think, man, if I had a larger audience I could share this with, well, one, one place is called SlideShare. Look up SlideShare, and you can post. It's a free service. You can post your PowerPoint presentation, put some tags on it and keywords, and somebody might find it uh, very likely looking for similar kind of content, and they might find your presentation that's usually been limited to a room full of people now is exposed to the entire world, and that very well could lead to some new leads for your business. So SlideShare is a real uh, popular area of social publishing. QR codes is one of those little things that you see out there. It looks like a little, uh, what do they call it, a little code, barcode almost. It's a coded thing where you scan it with a certain app on your smartphone, and that will take you to a, an online website somewhere. So QR, QR codes work alongside of your social media in many different ways. It's a unique part of your social media system because it's not real collaborative in terms of networking, social networking is. But you could drive people to your Facebook page with those. You could you know, drive them to your website. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to use QR codes. Uh, so I won't spend a lot of time on that one today. And then looking at check-ins, I think can be uh, social. Uh, social, what do you call it? It's a it's a way to create a community around people where they go. So people want to check in um, at a dentist's office or a mechanic or uh, at your school or at a, a you know a restaurant. Particularly, those are places where people like to check in at, and that creates a community. People, other people say, "Well, I like to go there as well," and you create a kind of a community around that. And particularly if you're on Facebook and you check in at a place, 
then that tells all their friends. They just went to that pediatric dentist. I've never heard of them, but I need a dentist. Maybe I should call up my friend and say, tell me more about that dentist. And that exposure all came from encouraging your customers to check in. So when they come to your site, come to your location, encourage them to check in on Facebook or uh, Yelp or Foursquare, some of those places. Okay, finally, is the, we always leave a category, kind of the empty chair. We leave it for the next thing coming because there's, there's going to be new things on, on the horizon and we just need to be ready for that. But again, if you go back into your strategy, you're going to have a strategy. You, you're going to be prepared for fitting that into your tactical approach. So look at this, this picture as your tactical approach, but then think back to your strategy first, your helper strategy. Then, you know, kind of pick and choose from this and say, okay, these are the most important things that we're going to work on in 2013, and these are the things we're going to work on next year, and these are the things we need to explore some more. We need to do some research. We need to look at, at using that. So now we're going to look at the way that we integrate this all together. So as we go into the third key of, in, of social media, and that's integrating all of this together. All right, so in the past, you have your little shop there. You have your store, and this could be a virtual store to... Uh, it could be uh, your 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 shop, and as we said in the right hand corner, there's a lot of been traditional marketing efforts. We call these outbound marketing, and some of those might be things like radio, TV, uh, even magazines or advertising in newspapers, even word of mouth. It can be included in this. This is traditionally what's always existed, and that's what we use to drive people to our store or to buy from us. And we wanted them to do it. So obviously some of them, like radio and TV, are very expensive. Even advertising in a magazine is, is, uh, can be costly, but it can drive results. And so it does, it does work. Direct mail would be a part of this as well. Uh, you've probably spent some money on direct mail. And some of you are saying, man, that worked great. Some of you are saying that's a waste of money. Uh, there's different successes with, uh, your, with outbound marketing. But what's happened in the last decade is introduced a whole other uh, way of marketing. It doesn't necessarily replace, but it's we're now integrating what we call the social media system that we just looked at into our overall marketing strategy. So now we get to add in not just outbound marketing tools and tactics, but now as the bottom left hand, we call this contemporary marketing or inbound, which means it's driving people into us from all these other channels out there and that's where we see a lot of our customers is, is in this uh, social media everybody's on social media we say well then let's use that to drive people into our store doesn't mean that the direct mail campaign doesn't work but what it does mean is if you're on TV and you spend a lot of you think well if I can just have enough money and spend thousands and thousands of dollars of reaching a mass audience what do people do on TV they Fast forward past the recordings because they recorded it on DVR and they just went right past the recording the, at the commercials. You just spend a lot of money. The commercials come on the radio and they turn off the channel during the radio or they flip to another station. They flip right over your magazine ad and you spend a lot of money on that magazine ad. And they just flip right over it uh, because you didn't give them anything in your advertising to to go anywhere. You just wanted them to go to your store, but it transforms the way we use TV and direct mail and radio and advertising and magazines. Because now we can drive them into our social media marketing system. And this method of integrating all of this together now allows us a whole other way of marketing, a whole other set of uh, uh, a system in place. So now, instead of just, and that doesn't mean that some of you may say, yeah, I've scrapped direct mail marketing a long time ago. But let's take that for example. Some of you may have given up on it, and that's fine. It may just not have proven useful. Uh, let me just ex explore something that could possibly work. Let's say you've used that and you said, hey, and the, the thing was a coupon and we wanted somebody to print it out, clip it out, and call us and stop by, and they never did. Well, what if we rethink the way we're doing marketing where instead of trying to drive people into our store, which is a uh, very traditional way of doing things, what if we looked at more of a, uh, a system instead of trying to drive people from just getting to know you in an advertisement and then trying to convince them, maybe even manipulate them to buy from you immediately. What if we introduce a strategy in, consistent with our plan of nurturing loyal ambassadors? These are these longtime customers who are going to repeat and going to be referral sources for you. 
That may take some time, but if we're useful and helpful with them, how would we go about doing that, nurturing them into loyal ambassadors? Well, maybe instead of focusing so much on the immediate action of coming to the store and buy from us and click this coupon and do it now, what if we said, for those of you who are not interested, because not everybody needs a new set of brakes, not everybody needs their uh, gutters cleaned out, or not everybody needs the new fitness plan, not every, whatever your particular thing that you're offering, not everybody needs that right away. They're not interested in signing up for your, uh, your offering immediately. But they're intrigued. But what do they do if they don't have anything else? They're going to toss that, put it aside, and it's going to get lost in a stack of uh, papers on their desk. But what if we said, okay, let's look for a system of taking them into our social media marketing system, and we're going to nurture them as, to, into loyal ambassadors. So now this direct mail campaign can say, hey, uh, you know, let's take a mechanic, for example, who says, yeah, here's a coupon, come in and here's $20 off your next uh, service. But we also know that not everybody needs that service right away. But we say, hey, also go to our website, again, into our social media marketing system, go to our website and download five tips for getting better gas mileage. Well, that's an educational article. It's something useful to them. It doesn't matter. Everybody needs that right away. No one's going to say, well, I don't need that now. Most everybody's going to be somewhat intrigued by that, and it's going to give somebody a second step to do, an action step with your advertising. And you could say, go into our uh, website and download that. You capture them into your email marketing system, and now you've got them into your social media database, and you can start nurturing that, giving them more information. And then when they do need a uh, new brake system or an alignment on your vehicle, you're now been nurturing that over the weeks and maybe months before they're actually ready and where they have that specific need. And so you see, just as a, that example alone, putting people into our social system, driving them to our website, maybe hopefully they're, while they're there, they would certainly join our Facebook page. You can do that directly in your magazine ad. You could say, you know, join our Facebook page and maybe tell them, Hey, on our Facebook page, we get daily tips on saving money or saving time or something like that. And you tell people in your advertisement, this is what you're going to get when you get into our social media system. You're going to get something useful. And again, we're taking that educational concept and making a prominent reason, giving somebody a reason to go into our social system and then using that to drive people from there into our shop. And when they come to our shop, they're not just kind of fresh transactions that just say, yeah, here's your money, I, I want my service, I'm paying for it, and I'm, I'm out of here. They come there as loyal ambassadors because they come here and they've been nurtured and they're ready to buy from you, but they're also more likely to repeat because you have nurtured them so much where they don't know, they don't trust anybody else. You're the trusted source for what they need, and they're very likely going to refer you because that you've been nurturing them and helping them, educating them all along the way. So when they come actually into your shop, they're ready to repeat and refer. That's what we mean by loyal ambassador. So this whole integration system, we have outbound, inbound, and now kind of a new term that could be suggested would be called omnibound, which is just a fancy, fun word. That means, hey, instead of just saying, hey, all the traditional advertising and marketing doesn't work, let's look at creating a system of uh, a comprehensive system that integrates outbound stuff with inbound social media being part of that and create a whole systematic approach to bringing people into our shop. So this lots of fun ways. I know this is a lot of information to, to run into uh, 45 minutes already, almost an hour of our time. We, we are uh, recording this, so if you're listening, you can go back and rewind it and listen to one of those sections again. Gather your team together, maybe gather your, your boss and say, can you listen to this section? This is what I'm trying to do on our Facebook page. Uh, we want this to be a useful, helpful presentation. And so, again, what we're talking about this is a comprehensive understanding of three keys to social media. So what we're going to do is close out today, I'm not trying to pressure you into any kind of obligation, but we want to offer you as a free gift. I've been talking to you the whole time about ways that we're going to help you. We want to be helper to you. If you've invested this hour of your time, we want to be, uh, we want to reciprocate and help you as well. So beyond just this webinar, uh, we want to give you a free gift of a 30-minute consultation. So instead of having to pay a, a marketing consultant for their time 
uh, you get a half hour and now that will probably even go over that we, we typically uh, don't stick to 30 minutes we try to uh, uh, we usually end up giving a little bit more but let's take for example you say I love this webinar I could see myself doing webinars how do I do a webinar <laughs> uh, we want to help you in that 30 minutes we could tackle that issue you may say, I don't even know where to start. Uh, can you give me 30 minutes of your time to kind of help me prioritize? Tell me which one you think I should do. We'll listen to your goals. We'll listen to understanding who your audience is, and we'll suggest to you some things that you can do. Uh, again, you may want to say, I've been on Facebook, and I've seen some of the things you all do with custom Facebook pages. Then maybe that's something we can talk about in 30 minutes, something that you could do with that. There's all kinds of ways in 30 minutes that we can give you ideas and listen to you. We're not coming here. This is not another presentation we're going to give you in 30 minutes. You're not going to have to sit through slides or anything. You, we pick up the phone. We schedule the time, and we listen. Yeah, they pick up the phone. They, you call, you, we'll set up a time and establish a, a good time for you, good, and we'll just get on the phone and talk. We're going to listen to your, um, your goals, and we will um, – Provide some suggestions. That's what our, our job is during that 30 minutes is to give you some practical steps of uh, helping you. So let me uh, just uh, tell you how to get to that. You want to go to marketingtwins.com forward slash free, F-R-E-E. -E. If you'll type that in, marketingtwins.com slash free, you'll see a form there. And that is a very simple form to fill out and just say, I need some help. In the comment section, there's a, there's a question, I think. Just indicate a little bit about what you're interested in so we can, when we get on the phone with you, we'll be ready to tackle that issue. Uh, if you don't really know, just say, I need some help. Can you help me get started? And then we'll get on the phone with you. One, either me or Donnie will spend 30 minutes with you uh, and do that. So we'll try to schedule a good time for you, whether it's in the day or even some evening appointments if that's necessary. So we want to help you do that. If you go also to our, uh, our website, marketingtwins.com, and do that forward slash free, you'll also see... Uh, abilities to connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and we, like I said, we, we do some YouTube videos. LinkedIn, we're also on Instagram and on Pinterest. And so you can connect with us on any or all of those ways. And what we hope to provide you is educational content uh, going forward. So we want you to, to learn more about marketing, and particularly small business marketing. So we've just been thankful you're here today. Again, if you're here live, we're glad you spent the hour of your time today to do that. If you're via recording, we're so glad that this uh, was able to give you an opportunity to, to join. It may be midnight when you're listening to this. I'm not sure. That's oftentimes when I listen to recordings. It's real late at night when everybody else is asleep. So whenever you're listening to this, I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, go to our website, marketingtwins.com forward slash free, and uh, let us have 30 minutes with you and just help you in any way we can. So until then, we'll see you at the next webinar we do. Uh, go join our Facebook page particularly, and that's where you'll get a lot of the information from us. So thanks for joining us today.